Hi, this is Jody from Jody's Gems Quilting, and I just wanted to thank all of my students and customers who bring me bags of scraps for dog beds. And a lot of times I go through them, I well, I try to always go through them because I find treasures in there that are not going in a dog bed. So I thought I would just share really quick. I just want to thank all of you and uh, let you know that you can expedite things by sorting them ahead of time and I just thought it'd be fun to show you where they go how they're going and what to do with scraps you cut off of quilt backings when you're done quilting them scraps from whatever that you think would go in a dog bed so hang tight here we go so my students so my students quite often will bring me a bag like this full of scraps and they're like okay this is for dog beds I've saved it for you and that's great. Um, and I thought, you know, I go through this and I sort it and I pick it through. And sometimes it's just a jumbled up mess, as you can see. And for the most part, this friend of mine did pretty good. This is pretty much all scraps for dog beds. But let me show you some of the other things I get that are really valuable that we can recycle and use to make quilts for people. For instance, this one right here, this is probably about an inch and three quarters wide, and it's long enough, and that we call these strings, or just pieces, that there is a group of people, lots of them actually around the country, that make quilts for different various um, charities, like Lutheran World Relief. That's the one that I donate through. And let me show you what else I found in there. So this is usable this is usable if you find strips pieces that you could cut two inch squares out of three inch squares out of four inch squares and so on this to me i'm so thankful she is so such a nice girl um i like to receive them just like this where they're pressed or somewhat pressed not pressed but not just a jumbled up mess so she folded them layered them back and forth and then they were in that bag but i don't have to do anything so what i encourage you to do is take pieces like this Find a shoebox, okay, and lay them in the shoebox so that they're nice and neat and stacked and they're not a jumbled up mess. Um, that would be so helpful if you can do that and then just close them up when you're done and you can drop them off um, the next time I see you at class or wherever. So that will be very helpful. I will take even things this uh, down to this small. This is I can probably get a two inch square out of here. And if not, then it goes in a dog bed. But there, I just see a couple of these fell on the floor. So I would probably try that. I did go down to one and a half inches for a while, but I'm tired of those. And uh, we just make them into new quilts. So when I get pieces like that, I stack them in a bowl and then I go through and when I have time, I cut them all up into usable sizes. This is part of my new lecture called the five S's and it's like scrap it, save it, show it. It's a variety of different things. What do you do with scraps? So this is what I do with the smaller pieces. The bigger pieces go down here and then I cut those up too. Truly scraps, things like this, threads, whatever, they go into the dog bed. So I keep a bin, a bucket, and it just goes right there. When I trim things up, that's where they go. The other place I like to put them is I make pillowcases out of fabric I don't want anymore. Maybe it's a scrap of something. And I fill them up halfway. This one's too full, so that's just one option, and it hangs right here off of my cutting table. The other thing that you can do, this is in my lecture. Ooh, I didn't mean to show you all this. This is a, a project in process and waiting. But here's strips, a whole stack of strips that are waiting to be put into a string quilt or maybe I come up with a design or something that I want to use them for a favorite pattern. I'll talk more about this at my new lecture also. My scrappy squares one, two, three, four, and five patterns all feature four patches built into more four patches into more four patches and that's where the little squares go so when we cut them up I have friends that just like to cut fabric I have friends who just like to press fabric they're not even quilters so they do a lot of this it just helps them pass the time so you can find friends they'll come and help you um, on their time when they're able and when they're healthy enough so back to this bag of scraps this is truly scraps these pieces of batting are too small 
for me to use in anything. You might be able to find uses, but all of this will get dumped into a pillowcase like this. And I recently was giving, given five bags full, uh, or no, five boxes full of pieces of fabric nobody wanted. And I went through, and of course, we don't use upholstery fabric for quilts. And um, so I turned them into little pillowcases. I just took what I had, and then we fill them half full, stitch the end closed. Now, I stitch just like two or three sides, depending how big the pillowcase is, and then um, fold it up and keep a whole stack of them. I made 50 of these the other day, all different sizes. So that works. This was an old, um, this was a shirt that I had. And when I took it out of the closet to wear it, it had discolored. I was like, what the heck? So I just took the top of it off and um, went around and surged the two or three edges and then filled it half full. And it's a nice little palette for an animal. And um, they have not complained. The shelters take these and they're, some shelters do require really fancy quilts, but some of them just are fine with this. As you can see, there's a variety of sizes. These are ready to donate. These I wanted to show you, these are also in that bag. And she was, my girlfriend was practicing her quilting, machine quilting. And so these, I would go back and surge the edges, zigzag the edges and call it a day and make one for it. However, when you're doing and just getting started and you have some really big stitches, I'm afraid that they'll get caught on their nails, the animal's nails. So I, this is going in a dog bed. If it was just practicing a new design, then definitely it, if it was, you know, tight, you can, if it's not too bad and you don't think it'll get caught on their nails, even this size isn't bad, um, for like little kittens. And so I would trim it up, clip all the threads off and do that. I'm just asking that you do this instead of sending it to me, um, for some reason, my life is just getting fuller and fuller by the minute. So those are going in dog beds. This is one that was in that box of donations. I have no idea what it was, but it was already quilted. And I was like, okay. So I just trimmed it up and then surged the edges. This will be a nice little palette for an animal. These were also in there. So this is just like a really heavy fabric. Um, we would not use for quilting because the Lutheran World Relief, they actually quilt and tie quilt them. So you have to be able to get a needle through them. And so this was too heavy for them. There was some flannel in there. So I just threw them together and surged the edges and made two little pallets that would be great um, for the shelter. So this is the load that I'm taking tomorrow with me to class and will get passed on for Lutheran World Relief. And I went, I had to go through all of these. So these boxes sit at my house till I have time. Um, sometimes I have time and sometimes it takes a long time. But you can see that the sizes of the pillowcases can be small. I've done some that are really big. And from now on, I'm hoping to carry these for all my students so that you can start filling your own bag. And when you're done, you can stitch it, fill it half full. So whatever size it is, just fill it half full. Stitch the end closed. I tuck them in usually and stitch the end closed and then fluff it up and flatten it out. They don't have to be big pillows. They're just a pallet. If it's too big, the animals can't stay. It, they fall off of them. They roll right off of them. Um, all sizes. I've done some really big ones because, of course, there are big dogs too. And this was actually a panel that I had bought to make for I Spy type quilt for, you know, babies and stuff years ago. And I see it was stained. I washed it. The white had stained. There was some discoloring. So I washed it to see if I could get it clean. It did not come clean. And I thought, well, instead of throwing it away, it's going to become two dog beds. So these are going with me to class tomorrow. But let me show you that this is what I saved for my friend. And all the scraps are stacked nicely. I just usually put them in a, I actually have a crate type thing that I put them in. And then I put them in a box and give them to her. So all of these are flat. They're not a mess. They don't, nobody has to press them. I also give them batting scraps when I'm not needing them or not using them anymore. I cut it off, which I'll show you in a second. But they will, I would say anything six inches wide, you know, by like 40 or 50 inches long, probably. Anything they can piece together. Their quilts are required to be 60 by 80 inches. So it's big and they need all the batting they can get. So to give you an idea, today I had some friends gathered together and we finished. I had quilted out, a friend and I had quilted out 10 charity quilts. And it just takes me, 
you know, time. I mean, I'm teaching, I'm working full-time grandmother and wife. And to get time to do all of this would, it's, it's crazy. So I'm just brought this to show you, this is what we cut off the quilts we put binding on today. So they were all done, just needed binding, 10 of them. So you'll see that I've got pieces. So this piece right here, that's going in a dog bed. This one right here, I might keep this for um, some types of quilts. There's some like quilt as you go things and different things. Otherwise, this one I think is probably too thin, too narrow. I would not mess with it, uh, stitching them together. So you can either stitch them together and make one big piece or you can put that in dog beds. The fabric, however, this I would keep and either put it on my pile to cut it up into scraps, into squares, or you can lay it in your shoe box carefully. And then when it's full, just bring it to me. Um, all of these go up towards Coopersburg. So if you live up that direction, Coopersburg, Pennsylvania, that is, if you live up that direction um, and want to meet with the, the girls that work up there, that's fine. You don't have to bring it to me. Um, you can just take it directly to them. I just hate to see really good scraps like these pieces go into dog beds for stuffing when they're usable and they can use them to make string quilts. They make all different kinds, but string quilts were their focus for quite a while. So these are wide enough, you know, the width of my hand that I would definitely use and give them. Um, I've got a bunch of like craft projects I'm working on. So some of these might get saved, but this is that the leader at the beginning when you quilt it out. And so this is the backing and this will all go in dog beds. To me, it's too small. It might even have a selvage on it. Oh, well, they might use that. I'll have to see. So anyway, instead of a big jumbled up mess, if you can sort those as you go, nothing, don't make it difficult. Don't stress yourself out. Uh, it just makes life so much easier if it's like, oh, Jody, here's a box of pre-cuts, you know, ready to go. Here's a box of um, batting that separate. You know, if you can do another box with batting, that would be great. And they're ready to donate so they don't have to take long. Anyway, I just want to, I just want to thank you so much for salvaging what you can, trying to keep the planet a little greener than, you know, just throwing everything away. And uh, if you are interested, I have a lot of scrappy patterns that will work for all these little pieces that we cut up. And if you want to use them, and it's a great way to do that. So check out my website at jodysgemsquilting.com. This is the Starry Wonder Table Topper. Comes in a variety of sizes, so six inch squares will make this. These are the placemats. So again, it just takes squares to do that. And sometimes people are done with fabric and this was all scrappy. This was all just leftover pieces, um, cut up squares. That's dancing stars and pinwheels. So just three little samples to show you. I hope you have a blessed day and I look forward to seeing you soon in a class near you. Thanks. Bye.